Hello everyone, my name is Anishana. Today I have came with new topic called Docker. So our agenda is what resources are required to run an application. Next topic would be traditional way of hosting an application with the help of physical servers. And after that, why we need virtualization if we have physical servers? Why we need container? Difference between VM and container. And then what is container? And last, we will cover what is Docker. So let's move ahead for our first topic. That is what resources are required to run an application. For any application, to run an application, whether it is Nginx, Node.js, any application, it requires RAM, CPU, and disk. Application demand these resources from operating system. Whether this OS is installed on physical server or in virtual machine. These operating systems has library and binary files. Library files are used by application and binary files are used by CPU. So let's assume we are in 1990 and there is no virtualization concept in the market. We need to deploy three application server for our one customer. Each application may share the operating system libraries files. Sometimes one application requires lower libraries version and other application requires higher version. Thus, we install these applications on separate hardware. Each server should have at least 4 GB RAM, 20 GB hard disk and 2 CPU. Very minimal configuration. We opt for this. For an example, right? So from this picture, we can see that in the vManage, we allocated 4 GB RAM, 20 GB hard disk and 2 CPU. Same for other two servers. However, they consume very less resources. It means operating system plus application server consume 2 GB RAM and 6 GB hard disk and one CPU throughout the year. And this is the same story for the two servers also. It means we allocated 12 GB RAM and it used 6 GB. But throughout the year, 6 GB RAM is totally waste. But we paid 12 GB RAM, right? If we pay only if we purchase only for 6 GB, maybe server crash and it sometimes it require more RAM, but throughout the year we observe that it only occupies 6 GB RAM. Same as it is for hard disk, 60 GB hard disk, that is 18 GB it use and 42 GB throughout the year it wastes, right? And same for CPU, half of the CPU is waste. On the top of that, below points also need to be considered. What they are? Three server hosting space, physical cabling, power adapter, physical switches, and a lot of manual work. Every time we need to send one field engineer on the data center and ask them to do all these jobs. Right? Now imagine, now imagine we have three customers and therefore we have to deploy nine server for them. It means again, there will be a lot of wastage, right? And this, to optimize the resource utilization, virtualization came in the market. First, we mount the physical server in the data center. Then we need to install the hypervisor. Here, we use VMware provided hypervisor like ESXi or Red Hat KVM. After that, we need to create virtual machines called VM. So we created three virtual machines. And after that, we install the cache operating system on all the three virtual machines. For Due to the limitation of library files and some other conditions, we install one application on one server. For that reason, we install three VMs and running applications like Node.js, Nginx, and web server. Here, intentionally, I have changed the application name because we can install any application. So we are not thinking about we manage, we bond, we smart. So we can think about only the application. This is Node.js, Nginx and Apache web server are just an example. 
In the resource utilization bar left hand side, one can notice that three op uh, operating system and applications are consuming a lot of resources. We can't stop the application server. However, we can curve the operating system. This can be done by container technology. Now think about it. One application, just think about there is a one application server that require Red Hat Server 7 operating system and Python 3.9.6. So we install this application on our lab environment and we develop a test this application and it worked fantastic, fantastically. In the production, we observed that we are running Red Hat 6.5 operating system and Python 2.8. And after that, we install this application server on the production server. Okay, same server, but we observe this application server is not running. Why? Because this application require Python 3.9 and Red Hat 7.0. Some binaries and library files are required this application to run correctly. But those library files are not present in this operating system. So it means it failed, right? So this is the reason again a container we required an application that is one application that is used in the production and same application that we can use in the lab same that we can test any application server it should work in the production without any dependency on libraries or binary files right or any operating system version so for that reason containerization comes in the picture so in this con Container. Again, we mount the physical server in the data center right after we install the operating system instead of hypervisor. On the top of that, we install the container engine called Docker. Okay, so Docker is just a container engine. Now we can create multiple containers. I will cover in my coming slide what is container. For now, you can imagine that these containers are lightweight and has capability to run multiple, okay, and can be run multiples. It means there are application servers, and again, if it's lightweight, then we can spawn multiple containers, right, with app one, app two, and app three. From the left, uh, if you see the left hand side resource utilization, you can see only one operating system is consuming the physical server resources. And apart from that, container very small and then application that is perfectly fine, which is acceptable right now. Right. So let's move ahead and compare the virtual machines and container. So as you can see here in the virtual machines, in the virtualization technology, we have to create multiple VMs and those VMs we have, we need to install guest operating system. And on the top of that, we can install multiple application or single application. It depends upon the architecture, right? But in the container, we need to install only one operating system. On the top of that, we can spawn multiple containers. These container, I will talk about later in my coming slide, okay? The second advantage of using this container is we can scale up or down the container very easily within less time as compared to VM. Why? Because in the VM, we need to create the virtual machine first, then install the operating system. It takes some time and then install the application server. But in container, we just need to delete the container and create the new container. It is very fast and you will notice within five minutes, five minutes is maximum I'm talking about, less than five minutes, the container is up and ready. So if there is any issue in one container, you can delete this container and create the new container. That's it. Okay. So container in the VM, yes. It is not necessary to install the container engine only on the physical server which means we can install container on the VM2. So in this case, we just create one new virtual machine, install the guest operating system after that container engine, and then spawn the container. So let's talk about more application server. So developer in the lab 
install the web server app, web server we can say that you know apache web server it install deploy install the package of apache 2 and then configure the configuration file and then create some directory and then add one index.html file and do some you know changes do some you know changes as per the requirement and then reload the service and this web server is up and running fine so all these configuration is built in a single image i will talk more that what do you mean by built in a image so we have already learned that for running an application these resources are required right but in container we just add this application server and the library and binary files which is required to this application server it means to running configuration file of the previous that i showed the apache web server and these libraries i just added in one image application web server apache web server and then libraries and binaries add and then create the container but actually we just create the image of this container so container is a standard unit of software that package up code and all its dependencies dependency means library and binary files so the application run quickly and reliably from one computing environment to another so in this case if this application has all this information right and if it's move from lab to production it will work always this is the reason container technology is in boom in the market from the image we will create the container in the cloud vm or in physical server so there is no foundation that this image i should create only on the vm or in physical machine you can spawn this container in anywhere right so what we understand the container now what is docker i just talk about container virtualization vms and physical machines and application server but what is docker so docker is a set of platform as a service pass product that use os level virtualization to deliver software in package called container in simple term we can also say that docker is a engine that manage container so as you can see as you can you know, learned from the previous slides that we can move the container from one place to another and we can spawn it so this is what i just written here docker is an open platform for developing shipping and running application so this running application and shipping it means from moving from one place to another docker enable you to separate your application from your infrastructure so that you can deliver software quickly so it it is not dependent on your physical server or virtual machine so if you create a container from the virtual machine so you should not or you cannot spawn this container on the cloud there is no limitation with docker you can manage your infrastructure in the same way you manage your application by taking advantage of docker methodology for shipping testing and deploying code quickly you can significantly reduce the delay between writing code and running it in production so in previously when we had only physical servers so we get the code from the or we get the documentation from our engineering team or developers so we need to follow those documentation and we need to execute each and every command one by one there was some time human error some time dependency error so we had lot of issue but in the container it's it's if it's already tested in the lab it should work in the production 99.9% it work but sometime again 1.1% is always having issue if you want to learn more on docker you can go ahead with this link and last although there are many tools available such as podman lxt containerd built ah run c but docker is more famous among them okay so this is the reason i am just taking the class session only for the docker so what are the take away so these are the our agenda that we covered what are the resources required to run an application cpu ram and disk and library files and binary files traditional way of hosting an application server for physical servers right 
owing to resource wastage we need virtualization right so we need virtualization so why we need to optimize the use of resources of physical servers right this is the major one but there are other you know aspects for utilization or virtualization so why we need container we understand that you know a container is very fast we can spawn we can scale up scale down and it is very easy to spawn the vm on the vm also right the container can be spawned on the vm also so difference between vm and container we covered so what is container it's just an image we can you know create the container from this image and spawn it anywhere and what is docker to manage these containers we use docker and docker provide the functionality for the os level virtualization so this is what we covered so in the next topic i will cover how to install docker on aws in the cloud or in the virtual machine in, the, in my laptop so after that we will start creating and modifying the containers and last but not least i already uploaded this ppt on my git hub account thus you can you may download this ppt and link you may find in the description of this video if you like this video please like subscribe and share this video thank you very much bye bye